Three, two, one. Hello and welcome, Lockdown Defenders. This is Coach Mike, and today we are breaking down one of the most important skills on the defensive end closeouts. The ability to go from off ball to on ball, taking away shots, containing drives, and preventing scramble situations. We'll go over the five key techniques in this video, as well as some of the common mistakes. Now let's get ready to master it. Oh man, oh man, what a defensive play. In this defense. Wow. Before we get into the five key techniques, we need to answer this simple question. Why are closeouts so important? Well, first off, it's the most common defensive skill you'll use on the defensive end. Think about it, only one player picks up the ball. Everyone else will need to execute a closeout to start guarding the ball. And so if you can't close out, it doesn't matter how great you are on ball, you won't get to show it. The second reason closeouts are so important is because basketball has evolved into a game centered around space and pace. Offenses using driving kick games to create countless closeouts and put the defense into a scramble. And so the defenders who can not only survive these scrambles, but can close out to stop them completely, these are the new defensive anchors of the modern game. Not rim protectors, but perimeter protectors. Now let's start getting to work. The first topic is one that has been through a heavy debate, closeout footwork. You have coaches who swear by the old chopping your feet approach, and those who fight for the modern sprint to one-two approach. Now each of these techniques has their own strengths and weaknesses. For example, chopping the feet does slow down and control your momentum very well, making you ready to contain drives. But it is very slow in getting into the shooter's impact zone, so you'll be more likely to give up high percentage shots even during your closeouts. On the other side, the stride stop closeout wastes no time getting to the shooter, going from a sprint to a stop and into that airspace. This is especially important at the NBA level where three-point shooting is so deadly and accurate because it can also increase your jumping ability when contesting or trying to block a shot. But the problem with this technique is the ability to give up drives. Oftentimes you are exposing an angle for the offense to drive with your one-two stop, instantly giving them a line of attack and leverage that is hard to cut off before a paint touch. And you're exposing your top foot which is a situation with little chance to recover. This is why I believe in a mixture of both approaches, and in fact, Paul from PGF Performance is on the same page as me. Chopping your feet is too slow. It's ridiculous to think about this, to change directions, or even on the offensive end to go for a layup. Instead, what we see most often from athletes is a four-step breakdown. Just like if a player is sprinting and starting to change directions to go the other way, in this way our closeout technique uses a four step breakdown, two chops to control momentum and a one two to get into the impact zone. This is a great technique and one that can be used at all levels. But if we can master this next concept, your footwork won't even be up for debate because great defenders arrive on the catch taking away the offense's advantage of reading the closeout completely. To accomplish this, we need to have a great steal second mindset. And hopefully you're already thinking baseball, a player on first base, active and fidgety, waiting for the pitcher to wind up so he can explode to steal second base. The same is true in basketball. To be an elite defender, you need to start anticipating, reading signals and arriving on the catch. Watch here as this player stunts at the ball and already starts his recovery to his man. Now the ball doesn't get passed, but that anticipation is what's needed to arrive on the catch. Or even immediately after, Kyle Guy is already starting his sprint expecting for that full reversal pass. And if we can arrive on the catch or get a head start, we're on our way to eliminating that threat of a closeout and starting our on-ball defense immediately. But I understand there are still situations where we'll need to close out with space, and these next three concepts will cover how to best impact and limit shot attempts. 
But first, if you've enjoyed this video so far, you can find a full 40 minute closeout clinic on my website. It will cover these concepts and a lot more, as well as the drills and teaching cues to help you or your team develop elite closeout defense. Check out the website LockdownHoops.com to find out more. Now, let's get back to the breakdown. The first key is an easy one, arrive with an early hand. This may seem simple, but it is the number one tool for us discouraging a clean catch and shoot shot. Many players make the mistake of waiting to raise their hand until the shooter starts their shooting motion. By then, it's far too late. We have not impacted the shooter's thought process at all. Instead, our early hand needs to be up even before and during our four step breakdown. In this play, the hand is up even before the feet start their breakdown. But as you can see, what if they decide to shoot anyway? Well, that's when challenging at the point of release becomes crucial. This will have the greatest impact on shooting percentage and is a concept taken from two defensive sages of our game, Rick Pitino and Tony Bennett. Simply said, it is not enough to just have a hand up. Players practice against that all the time. If we want to truly disrupt a shooter, we have to challenge at their release. Get your hand to the level of the ball. Now the shooter has to alter their shot, or at the very least, you've entered their thought process, making for a shot they've rarely practiced. One hesitation with this technique is the need for players to leave their feet. And I agree that our goal should not be to block shots and fouling here is the worst outcome. However, players should wait to be the second jumper, leaving their feet only when the shooter has left theirs, being vertical challengers and having the greatest impact on shooting percentage. And this last concept will answer the question you've been asking probably from the start. How close do I need to get on my closeout? Well, two factors go into that. Number one, your matchup. Obviously, you need to close out much tighter to Steph Curry than to a non-shooting threat. But the second part of that equation is one that you have to answer for yourself, and that's your distance of impact. You can see Robert Williams III can have quite a large cushion on the ball and still contest heavily and at the point of the release due to his size and wingspan, whereas a smaller player will need to get much closer to impact the shot in the same way. Knowing your distance of impact and your own strengths and weaknesses will better help you incorporate all the concepts we've covered in this video. Remember, closeouts are one of the most used skills on the defensive end. And if you want to become a lockdown defender, you'll need to master the closeout. And it won't only help you, but it will anchor your team. I want to thank PGF Performance and Hooper University for some of the content that was featured in this video. I posted the link to their full videos in the description below. As always, I'm Coach Mike with Lockdown Defense. Keep up the hard work.